Good evening, and welcome to St. Peter Church. Please join us in singing our opening song, Jesus is Risen. to welcome the students from Q&D and their guests to our celebration today as they celebrate their prom tonight. So we pray for them and pray that God will continue to watch over and protect them. And so we begin now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and now as we gather around the table of the Lord, we pause as we acknowledge our own sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the good shepherd leading to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all now to everlasting life. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under the heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and have been my Savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have been my Savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. The song rejected by the builders has become
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from his holy gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I laid down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. And good evening. evening, Proms at the atrium, correct? You don't know? The ambiance. Well, I don't know. One one after another. Is there dinners being served there? What time is the dinner? You don't know? Is it first come, first serve? Because I was just wondering to myself as these front two pews are open. I bet you'll be the first in line for that, (laughs) for the food out there, right? Okay. But I'm I'm really happy. This is one of the uh, great experiences I have as a pastor to see our young people before the, whether it's prom or homecoming, to come and celebrate the Eucharist with us. So thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. 
It gives comfort and strength. And if you look at the rest of this congregation, they're all thinking about their proms and how they dressed up, right? I'm sure. Today is what we often call Good Shepherd Sunday. How many of you know a shepherd? You know one? Oh, no. oh, I thought you were... Okay. I don't know a shepherd. I have, I've never seen a shepherd in action. Of course, I haven't seen much sheep around here either. You got pigs, you got hogs, and you got cows, cattle, but I haven't seen much of sh uh, sheep. And so I thought to myself, what kind of image, if I was going to talk to you about what Jesus is trying to say to us about being the good shepherd, what other kind of image could we use? How many of you have pets? How many of you have a pet dog? Cats are another thing. Okay? They, they wouldn't listen to your voice if, you, if they knew it. You're supposed to pay attention to them. But you all have pets. Some of you have pet dogs. Okay, the interesting thing about, I've had, I've had three dogs in my, well, four dogs. Growing up, we had a, a little stray. That was a, my dad found it in a boxcar off the railroad. But then I, when I got to be a priest, I decided I was going to have a English bulldog. You ever heard, say, seen an English bulldog? They're stocky and lazy <laughs> and sometimes stinking. But I had her for about six years, ugly as heck. <laughs> we call, her name was, of all things, Buttercup. <laughs> Didn't seem to fit things right, but that's what she was called, so I kept it. After I got to Effingham, I got another dog, and she was a German Shepherd. And I had her for 13 years and then I had to put her down when I got here. And I thought to myself, I don't need another dog. But somebody encouraged me from the pound to get one. So I got one. She was another German Shepherd. Had a mind of her own. And as a puppy, what I found out is that it takes a dog a while to learn your voice. Once they are in tune with your voice, it's amazing how they respond to it. Sometimes that voice <laughs> got to be anger, but nevertheless, it re always responds to the voice of the master. And I think that's exactly what Jesus is trying to tell us about being the good shepherd. Sheep at the, at the time of Jesus was, they, they basically were like pets. They really were. They didn't, they didn't eat them. They were used for wool and milk. Very seldom would they eat them. And sometimes they would be sacrificed at the temple. And the reason they were chosen to be sacrificed is because they were so valuable to the people. And to offer that as a sacrifice said something to God. But it's rather interesting that the sheep would all listen to the shepherd. They would be in tune with his voice, like Abby is in tune with my voice now. Before, when I first got her, I'd, we'd go outside to walk outside the fence, and off she'd run. And for a 60-some-year-old man running after her, I thought, this is unreal. But nevertheless, after a while, she under began to understand and hear my distinct voice. And then I got, I also found out that, I, you know, a German shepherd you think would be a protector. Well, not when you have a German Shepherd that's as kind and loving as she is. I took her home one time to my sister's, 
and my brother, my nephew brought in their dog, who was a mean sucker. And that dog went after Abby. Where'd she run? Right below my feet. I was supposed to protect her, which I did. But that's another image of what the shepherd does. The shepherd is the one who protects the sheep. So much so that they would lay down their life to protect the sheep. What, does he think, what do you think that says about Jesus as a good shepherd for us? We just celebrated, didn't we? Good Friday. Jesus laying down his life for us. Wow. But that's what the good shepherd does. He protects us, guides us, directs us. And you know, the key part about a shepherd at the time of Jesus was that a shepherd would never drive the sheep from behind because they would just scatter. But the sheep were in tune with Jesus, with the shepherd's voice, so that as he walked ahead of them, they followed him. The trouble, my brothers and sisters, sometimes in our own personal lives and stuff, we unfortunately have been bombarded by differing other voices in life. I don't have to tell you that. Sometimes it's called peer pressure. Sometimes it's called doing the things we want to do in this world where we think we are in control. Those are all voices that are telling us and to do it our way instead of following the way of the shepherd. And that becomes a difficult problem. Then that becomes what we would call the lost sheep syndrome. And sometimes it happens. We lose our way. We become the lost sheep. But one of the beautiful parts about the image of that good shepherd is that even in the early church, one of the com most comforting images in the early church, you could see them sometimes in the catacombs. You know what the catacombs were? They were the burial places underneath in caves and stuff that the early Christians would celebrate the Eucharist over the graves of saints and stuff. But that's where they were buried. And one of the beautiful images is of Jesus carrying a sheep on his shoulder. And that's the beautiful part, my brothers and sisters. Even when we've gone astray, even though we have been the lost ones, Jesus always seeks us out, carries us on his shoulders, and brings us back. And so the, our struggle always is to make sure that our lives are always in tune with the voice of the shepherd. And when we are in tune with the voice of the shepherd, I can guarantee one thing. You will find a happiness and joy within yourself. And you will find in what I would call an integrity of life within yourself. So that's the challenge for us. To so make sure that our lives are always in tune with the voice of the shepherd. And when we do, that shepherd always leads us home to be comforted within ourself and to also know what awaits us in the joys of heaven. So we stand now. Let's together profess our faith in that good shepherd for Israel who was God himself. And so we profess that faith and that belief in the triune God as we say, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ. God from true God, be God not made, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's family now, I want to place these prayers of petition now before our Father. For those who are ill, may Christ heal them in body and spirit and comfort them with his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our faith community, may the Good Shepherd help us to love one another as he loves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and stability in the nation of Haiti. May the Prince of Peace be near those living in fear and may he bless them with unending hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Nolan Michael Hildebrand and Maddox Lee Peters, as they receive the grace of baptism in our church this weekend, that they may continue to grow closer to Christ as a child of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the couple that was married in our church this weekend, Jacob and Samantha Smith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Barb Dieters who passed away this week, that they may know the glory and the splendor of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of our special intentions, especially for the intention of this Mass, our parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray also for all the candidates and the team members of the tech that's going on this weekend. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all of our students who are, will be enjoying their prom tonight, that God will watch over them and keep them safe from all harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we offer you all of these prayers. We ask you to answer them through your Son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord, our Shepherd. Amen. <laughs>
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks now to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and do this in memory of me. And the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Savior's command now and form divine teaching, we dare to say together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and, uni and unity according to your will, according to, according to your will, with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. God's peace with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Goodness of God. 
And just remain seated for a minute. Um, at the very end of Mass, when we have our recessional, we have our recessional march of our prom people. So I want everybody to be able to see you and how classy you look, how beautiful you look. So you guys will come out this way and march down the main aisle. The rest of you can be, remain seated so you can watch, we'll call it a parade, <laughs> but we'll call it a, a recessional. Second, You've, you've all, at least our parishioners all noticed that we've had been having our Upon This Rock campaign. Well, it has hit a milestone this week. We reached our celebration of our goal of $5.1 million. Wow. And we're very grateful to those who have supported this campaign thus far. We do need to do more work to do. There's more work to be done before we raise the funds to build the entire project, as we're hoping, from the cafeteria to our parish center down the basement here and to the classrooms. But we're celebrating this weekend our commitment, our community's commitment to St. Peter. Can't tell you how thankful I am for all of you. Our pinnacle goal is achievable, but it's going to take the whole community to participate. Next weekend, we have what we call our Commitment Weekend, where we all will have the opportunity to invest in this campaign. There are our matching gift challenges that generous donors have issued to maximize the effort. So please take a minute to see the campaign displays in the Narthex if you haven't already. So thank you. And let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you and remain with you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I do thank our students for celebrating with us, and we pray that you, your decisions that you make tonight will all be, all be wise and intelligent decisions that keep you safe. Go in peace. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.